All right. Good morning, everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me and uh, see my screen just fine? Yeah. All right. Good, good, good. My name is Naveen Prithiani. I'm the analyst from uh, Forex Watchers. And uh, you know, I want to start off by saying thank you to Epic Street for having me here to do this uh, one day, one topic uh, presentation thing. And today we're going to be discussing um, a bit on leverage. Okay. How many of you guys are well aware of uh, how a leverage works? Okay. When you guys open your, your Forex accounts, right? You, it, it, was, it asked you what type of leverage do you want. It gave you that option. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the five reasons, um, or I would say the five, five areas that caused me damage throughout the years, long, long time ago, where it just stopped me from growing. I just couldn't grow my account. You know, I was going through good strategies. I had everything out there, but it just wouldn't grow because the extreme leverage that was there was causing me to um, go above and beyond. Sort of like a saying that when you when you give people an option, they will always choose the wrong one. Similar to that, you know, uh, when you give the average person a credit card, majority do not respect it they actually abuse it and then they get stuck. Is that correct? Does everyone agree with me on that? So leverage basically is a loan from your broker to you saying that you have a hundred dollars but I'm gonna make your hundred dollars worth ten thousand dollars in the market. When you make profit, you'll make profit on the ten thousand dollars. You know, it's, it sounds really beautiful, right? Okay. So that's you're making money off of the broker's money, but the same applies when you know the things are reversed. When you lose, you lose at the same speed. So now it's it's almost like saying the broker just gave you the ability to lose at a faster speed. Right? So when you when you consider a leverage of 100 to 1, 200 to 1, uh, you know, countries like Cyprus giving you 500 is to 1. I've seen 800 is to 1 leverages out there. That's, it's phenomenal. These numbers are insane. Okay? So let's, let's start with why is there high leverage? You know, what is the reason? Why is there high leverage? Well, how come we don't have leverage uh, in, in, you know, high leverage like that in stock market or anything like that? You know, why do we have it in Forex? Now, leverage, you know, when it was implemented um, by brokers back in the day, it was due to because the fluctuation in the currency market happens less than 1%, right? Um, you don't go from $1.23 to suddenly $1.60 overnight. It doesn't happen like that. Now, situation is th that's why the leverage was created, to give you that ability to uh, take advantage of those movements of just only a 1% movement that happens between a currency pair. However, it's no longer that situation anymore because not only do we have two digits after the decimal, but we have four now even going into five digits after the decimal. Right? Everyone with me so far? So now, instead of leverage being useful, it's become harmful, but it has not been removed. Now, some countries have started to regulate it, like uh, the United States, um, the UK, you know, where your leverage is allowed at, at a maximum place. Don't get freaked out that, oh my God, I can't believe my country doesn't trust me. No, in fact, they're doing you a favor. They're keeping you alive. You know, this is why I wanted to use this image to show you how dangerous this leverage is. Okay? So let's start with um, the first damage that used to cause me. Um, there, there you go, 20 to 1 uh, run, uh, forex.com. Yeah, even um, uh, Swiss Quotes, I think uh, they, they introduced that as well. They started to reduce it. it. It'll only keep you safer. Think of it this way. 
when when you're investing, do you go around investing your family's money, your uncle's money, or and stuff like that on something you're trying? Okay, if if you're if you're a seasonal seasonal investor, which means you're doing fantastic, and then you're investing someone else's money, fair enough. But if you're barely doing it for yourself, and you're investing someone else's money, that's death. Okay, that's deadly. So, it's the same thing. Leverage is basically money that does not belong to the trader. It's excessive money given to you to speed up the process of profits and losses. And as we all know, 95% of the people lose in the market because due to no patience, high levels of greed, high levels of fear. Right? Everybody wants to get that private jet overnight. They're thinking, hmm, I can double my money every day or worse comes worth, I'll double my money every month. You know, that's the perception. When they when they come approach forex, it's like this is fantastically easy. You know, I just click a button and overnight I just made uh, five thousand pounds, or five thousand euros, or five thousand dollars. Like this is chim change. I can tell my boss I quit. And that's the perception people get into when when they approach forex. You know, so so the first step, risk. You know, when you when you use leverage, your risk dramatically increases. Now, let's say you have a $1,000 account. Okay, from the $1,000 account, um, you have a, a small leverage where your 1000 is not equal to more than, let's say, 2000 or maximum 20000 Now, 20000 units, what does that get you in the Forex market? That's basically two mini lots, right? which basically means uh, $2 per pip on average. Okay, so $2 per pip on average, if you have a loss of $50, doesn't affect you so much, right? Okay, now, a $1,000 account with the leverage that's given to you uh, to make your account 20000 and a small loss of 50 pips wipes out your account 20 percent. Okay, sounds deadly when I say it like that, right? Okay, it wipes out your account 20 percent. This is a small 50 pip stop loss. Now you can lie to yourself all you want that I'm only going to have a 5 pip stop loss or 10 pip stop loss, and my majorities are always going to be winners. It, like I said, if you're not a seasonal trader, leverage is extremely, extremely dangerous for you. I don't care how many novels or educational books say it's a double-edged sword. It's also a benefit to you. It's not. For new traders or traders just getting to getting some exposure to trading, it is not at all. Okay. Um, it is also important how big position you take or not. Yes, that, that's absolutely correct. It's um, uh, Flip, Philip. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna talk about that. And Jason, seasonal. Uh, basically, I just mean experienced trader. You know, someone who's been trading for years and years and years, and it's this is what they do for a living. You know, that's different. So, um, when you say it's it's important of how big of a position you take. Now, uh, that's what I want to say. With uh, you, you have a ability. Okay, with the leverage, you get the ability to open, let's say, $100 per pip. Okay, but your account size is only $1,000. But you might be thinking, I'm not going to use the whole $100. Are you crazy? That's that's too much. You use a smaller size, let's say, one mini lot. Okay, all that extra leverage you haven't used, right? Why is it even there? Just think about it for a moment. If If you have control, you're not going to use it. Why do you need that high leverage? The thing is, when things go wrong in your trading, a person usually jumps in and starts doing revenge trading, which means, ah, oh, crap, I can't believe I made, that, made a stupid loss. I need to get back in and get that money back. And what most people do, I'm not saying all, what most people do is they up the size of the trade 
because they're allowed to buy leverage and they try to get that money back plus more. Is that correct? Is everyone is everyone with me so far? So if you don't need it, get rid of it. Don't just keep it there thinking one day I might need it. No, no. When you need it that one day, you can call up your broker again and be like, increase my leverage. But get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's extremely dangerous. So first step was risk. You increase your risk dramatically, dramatically. And we're talking tenfold, twentyfold. You increase your risk so much more. Okay. Forex, it's it's about growing your account. Okay. You should never forget why most people are in Forex. Only a few percentage, I would say 1% or even 2% of the people trading Forex are in Forex because they like problem solving. They like to figure it out. The majority of the people are there to make money, but they get sidetracked. Their focus is, I need to make money, but then the focus starts shifting to, you know, I just need to prove to people that I know what I'm doing. I just need to go onto forums and say, look, it's going to go long. And if it goes long, woohoo. No. Who cares if it's if you're right or wrong? It doesn't matter. It's the account that make, makes a difference, right? We're here to make money. And if that's not the bottom line, then the goal is all messed up. Right? There is no end result. You know, where are you headed then? So... You must understand, so if, if the objective uh, for the majority of the individuals are to grow the account balance, you know, uh, or poker players call it, you know, protect the stash, you know, the chip stack. So that's your number one concern. Uh, Jason, conflict of goals for many. Yeah, it is. It is because they come in thinking that I need to make money. But when they start joining Forex, it's all about, I need to get the right strategy, I need to get this, I need to get that. And like everything is like I'm working towards the main goal. Uh, and they forget that while you're working towards the main goal, you keep cutting off your account little by little by little by little until it's wiped out. Or it goes down 50% and, and it's like, okay, that's it. No more forex trading for me. This isn't working. Right? That's what most people do. It's like I was making serious cash on my demo account that's why I opened the live account or my friend Bob next door told me about Forex and he was making a, a chunk loads of money for the first month I was like okay I'll do it too okay. and then slowly you start to see that well there start there goes the savings it starts deteriorating okay so the next thing is the damage is caused because leverage goes together with psychology. Just like a credit card that's given to you, even though you don't want a credit card, but they rub it in your face that, here, take a credit card, you know, $50,000 limit, take it. Okay, it goes hand in hand with psychology and you're like, eventually you're like, I'm not gonna use it, I know myself, I'm disciplined. But in case I need it one day, I can use it. Leverage goes very, very closely with psychology. It's the same mentality. Okay. Some people don't even know what leverage is, and they choose the highest number. And people who do know what leverage is, you know, and they use this as an excuse that I'll need it one day. And sooner or later, 50% of their trades are usually over leveraged. Okay. All right. The next thing. When you're using high leverage, okay. A, a trade is setting up. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a trade I'm in. Okay, I'm in this New Zealand US dollar for a sell right now. Okay, now imagine if this sell that's that's being active right now, if it wasn't happening, uh, if, if it wasn't technical, if it was fundamental. Now, I would be looking at this like, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I'm going to sell it. And I'm and I'm pretty certain that this sell is accurate. You would probably increase your lot sizes, thinking that this is the way to go. I've been waiting for this for for ages. Again, the time spent waiting for a trade also plays a hand in hand. This is also going again with psychology. You know, if you don't trade for a week, just waiting for trades to set up, and then once it comes close to it, you're going to be like, "Aha! There it is. I want to trade this now." So similarly. Once you take this trade, 
if it is news based then your stop loss that you have up here is going to be interfered with which means your spread that you originally used to see for two pips can suddenly become 30 pips suddenly 30 pips how many of you guys have brokers like that where the moment a little bit of volatility comes in your spread goes into phenomenal numbers double digits you know something you would never imagine yeah it becomes crazy right and the only explanation that comes out forth is you know the systems cannot handle so many trades at a time um, that's why we have to increase the spreads okay uh, MR, MRC uh, no I, uh, not today this is today we're just discussing on leverage okay so we uh, Philip you're, you're very what, what broker are you with you that's very good um, it's it's very rare some brokers uh, will, will keep that spread very very stable Admiral markets okay okay so usually you know um, the spreads can become an issue you know that's what that's what I call uh, you know, just simple broker interference okay and these are the typical retail brokers that claiming their ECNs and all that stuff you know typical stuff they're just like just like us they're here to make money as well you know so the, the 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 situation is do i fight it or do i find a way around it okay uh at 10 can i've seen brokers that give 2000 to 1 leverage yeah that's insane right like 2000 2000 to 1 leverage that that basically means if you were to exercise something like that a single trade <laughs> if that goes wrong, you know, maybe 30 to 50 pips, that account is out. That account is out. You know, it's just like all your eggs in one basket kind of thing. So, I mean, instead of a 2,000 to 1 leverage, you might as well be trading Forex options or, you know, the spread betting kind of thing that's going on these days. Uh, what, what's that uh, What's that new hype that's in the market these days? Um not forex trading it's the uh, uh, binary options yes yeah yeah new way and <laughs> a new casino just opened up all right so the next thing uh, number four is uh, bad money management you know when the leverage is just, just sitting there you know I can pretty much assure you um, in due time when you look back at your spreadsheet or your account uh, account statements or something like that, you will notice that the account, even though you're very good at your trading, your account's not going to be growing because of poor money management with various lot sizes increasing and decreasing. How many of you guys here use proper money management when trading? Okay, attempt to. Let me, I'm going to give you a quick fix some on every trade okay I'm gonna give you a quick uh, a, a, a basic you know a very basic I'm not gonna go into extreme details but I'm gonna give you a very basic of how um, how money management is, uh, should be working in your favor now let's say you have a thousand dollar account right a thousand dollar a thousand pound or whatever it is on average you know um, experienced individuals they'll, they'll try to do something that's one to two percent uh, per trade basis you know not all the eggs in one basket kind of thing right and we can get into all the stuff like how that two percent becomes you know four percent or six percent or ten percent on a certain trade but that's that's uh, for a later topic um, so on average would be one to two percent right now if you take your thousand dollars and you take that into two percent that's twenty twenty dollars that you can risk on any single trade now does that mean twenty pips no, no. it means twenty dollars now if you have a hundred pip stop loss twenty dollars if you have a ten pip stop loss twenty dollars if you have a fifty pip stop loss $20. Whatever that stop loss is, it must equal to 
total of $20 worth of loss if that stop loss is hit. Okay, so if your stop loss is 50 pips, you divide this by 50, and that's when you get my per pip needs to be 40 cents. Okay, this is a rough way of explaining it. And if you keep this keep this in mind and keep it steady like this, you will start to see your account start to flourish a little bit. You know, then it's all about what strategy you're trading and how you're going about it and how disciplined you are and consistent. Okay. You know, the number one thing apart from leverage that kills people is hopping. You know, changing strategy. Oh, this doesn't work. Let's try that. Oh, this doesn't work. Let me try that. You know, how how long? How long are you gonna do that? You know, it's it's like there is no golden goose out there. Okay, so now and the fifth thing um, that I noticed uh, that used to affect me um, in personally when leverage was an issue back in the day was when I used to add positions. Okay, that's a, a, a very a very good way to uh, scale an account usually when when your accounts are flowing. Now, for example, I'm going to show you something here. Like, Remember when I was saying I was trading this uh, New Zealand US dollar here? Now, if this New Zealand US dollar comes up to here a little bit and it starts to fail somewhere partially up there and begins to roll over and start turning down again, you know, this is the area where I would usually add positions to my cell uh, that's already in play. But what I used to do back in the day, you know, silly trader I was, was I, I used to add positions um, in terms of not my money management, but in terms of leverage, like oh okay, my broker is allowing me to add additional fifty thousand, so I would add in maybe additional forty thousand instead of fifty thousand. You know, I'd, I'd keep a little bit to the side, kind of like who am I lying to? You know, like it's just uh, you know I kept a little bit to the side, saying that I'm not using all of it. <laughs> you know, it's, so I was doing that. I was adding positions that way, and that one. Okay, every now and then my accounts would skyrocket because of adding positions and stuff like that. But I, as quickly as my accounts used to skyrocket, it's that very same speed the accounts also dropped. Okay? It comes down and it haunts you. It comes back right, it comes right back at you. Alright? So, a couple things. Okay, risk. You know that's one of the things that issues with high leverage. The next thing, it's it goes hand in hand with psychology. If you don't need it, get rid of it. Otherwise, you're going to use it sooner or later. When you see an opportunity, when you see someone you trust, and and that person is saying, "Trust me, dude, it's gonna go. You need to buy this trade right now." You know, people get excited. You know, everything's run based on emotions. You know, look at your telemarketers or your salespeople around the world out there. When they call you or they try to have you buy a timeshare or something, it's all based on emotions. They're, no, they're not selling the product. They're selling your image of what you're going to look like if you use that product. You know, it's a sales technique, right? It's like, if you don't do this, then you're not going to be in a Ferrari. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to trading? Where did the Ferrari come from? You know, so, yeah, it's a lot of social pressure, lots of sales techniques and everything. So this works really, really closely with uh, psychology. Third thing is broker interference is always going to be there. It's always going to, you know, every now and then pop up uh, and show up. There's nothing, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Think of it this way. When you make money in Forex, someone on the other side is losing, right? Right? Do you feel bad? It's the same process that the brokers, if you lose money, and they're, they're here to make money too, they can care less. You know, if, you, if you're like, hey man, what's going on? This is not good practice. They're like, well, oh, go, go cry somewhere else. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a shark eat shark world, you know. It's not even dog eat dog, it's a shark eat shark world here. It's the biggest industry in the world. It has the most transactions and turnover in the world on a daily basis. They're not just going to be lenient in this market. You know, 
when you're trading, you're not up against another person in his flip-flops. You're up against people waking up 8 o'clock sharp, getting to their office in their suits, and sitting down with their head, head fixed on straight, saying that, I need to make money. They're not there with their Facebooks halfway open, their dogs running around their legs, and saying that, eh, maybe, you know, this is the right way to trade. Trading's easy. No, no. You're competing against the world's best. Okay? This is why it's a trillion dollar market. It's, you know, people make it seem easy, but it's not. And that's the reason why leverage comes in as a factor of you can really flip your money very quickly. Okay? So does everyone understand why, why leverage is extremely dangerous? Um, at least if you're in the industry for three years and you, and this is my personal opinion, I'm going to tell you. If, if you've been in the industry for three years, and from the three years, two years, you haven't switched strategies. And you've been trading at least maybe 20 trades every two months, you know, or 10 trades every month on average. Then you can consider leverage. Okay, I, I'm not going to even ask you if you make profit or not. But you have control. Okay, everyone always has this ability of thinking that it's not me. I have control. Everyone does have control. That's, that is true. Everyone does have control. But there are times when situations arise and you're like, maybe I should do this. You know, desperate times for desperate measures kind of thing. All right. Um, the fourth thing was bad money management will start to play a role when you start swapping around your lot sizes and everything and uh, your position sizes okay and the, the fifth thing was adding positions um, adding positions something based on what you don't have is risky but adding positions based on what you do have that's a risk you can you, you can take all right All right, so yeah, so what did I do? That's the, the next question, right? And what, what did I do to immediately get out of this mess? I was, I was stuck in this leverage situation for quite some time because I was like, my trading is good. I'm, I'm, I seem to be quite consistent, but why the bloody hell is my account not growing? Like, why am I still minus, you know, 20% or something like that at the end of the month, even though I have like 80% winners? Like, it made no sense. You know, then when I start reviewing everything and it's, you start to figure out that it's it's the bad habits of using leverage. It's the excitement of I need to flip it. So what I did was I called up my broker and I said, what's the lowest leverage you have? And he said, you know, something like uh, 10 is to 1 or 5 is to 1, I think he said. Um, and then I started calculating if I have 10 is to 1, can I, what, what kind of position size can I op open if my average stop loss is let's say 30 pips you know you need to find out what kind of trader you are are you a long-term trader are you trading daily charts are you a short-term trader are you trading 15 minute charts or one hour charts if you're a short-term trader then your average stop loss is going to be in that range right 15 to 30 pips so then if it's if 15 to 30 pips your leverage um, doesn't need to be so big okay because if you if you take something small as 20 is to 1 or 10 is to 1 and you have a stop loss of 30 pips you'll realize that 30 pips will equal to 2% of your account anyways it won't let you open anything more than that so i started off uh, going straight to 20 is to 1 from 200 is to 1 that was what i was allowed back in the day in the us uh, 200 is to 1 and i dropped it down to uh, uh, 20 is to 1 um, before all of that, I was with uh, FX Pro. Uh, there, I had a beautiful 500 is to one. I, I never came out alive, you know. So, just, <laughs> just sharing my experiences. So, and then it, it uh, you know, as I switched brokers, and you know, still, um, you know, there's a lot of hanky panky brokers out there. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, 20 is to one is where I ended up. Uh, and now I've upped it to 50 is to 1. 
Okay. What is your average uh, leverage size you guys are all using? Can you guys share it with us? What's the leverage you guys are using? Fifty to one? Fifty to one? Okay. Good, good. Ten to one. Richard, very good, very good. Amish, fifty to one. Uh, Patrick, hundred, two hundred. Okay. Philip, two hundred. Uh, Asma, I would recommend uh, checking with your broker or logging into your account. Fernando, 0.1 is to one. There you go. Yeah, big man. Okay, so, um, so uh, let me ask you this for guys who are at 50 is to one and 100 and 200 is to one. Let me ask you, how do you feel about the performance? How do you feel? Do you feel that it's your strategy or the way you're trading that's incorrect? You know, or do you feel that the hits that you're getting on the account, it's such big amounts uh, because of just choosing a, a, a bad size because it's allowed, right? So the first thing we want to do, we want to protect, we, we want to protect uh, a run um Trade best with one or two lots. Yeah, I run. I trade close to ten lots. You know, it's it, you will increase as you go, and uh, you you know, like I said, if there is a next situation where we have to discuss another topic of how and when to increase your percentages, I, you know, I go all the way up to six percent sometimes, ten percent sometimes, but um, one to two lots is pretty good. It all depends on account size and on the leverage. Uh, I fill up my own mistakes, but I always use same sizes of lots, so in fact, I don't need leverage. Okay, so if you're using the same size of lots, that's also um, not gonna grow your account. Because then you're you're completely um, putting your faith on uh, your strategy, right? If you use the same same size, you're, you're doing it based on strategy, thinking that, uh, the, the the your strategy must pull you out so n never put your faith so much on a strategy always look at it like whether a strategy helps me or not whether a trading system helps me or not whether a automated robot who's trading my account helps me or not I myself am completely responsible to protect the account as much as possible which means I'm willing to try different things fair enough but I'm not willing to risk the whole account on the line to try it. Just because two things came out in a profit doesn't mean I'm going to start upping my lot sizes. Okay? If you want to use something that I've done, I, I use 20, 20 trades on average to decipher um, if this is going the right direction. Before 20 trades, if a single trade goes into profit, I can care less. I still look at that as a loss. But if I'm getting 20 trades in there and 17 or 18 on on average are are winners or doing decent, you know, if if 10 of them are winners but they're bigger bigger winners than the other 10 that have lost, I still think okay, I'm getting somewhere. I am willing to now slowly increase my size a little bit to a point where I can reach the 2% on my account. You'll be very surprised if you go at the average rate of two percent and you're and you're gunning for pips, you can easily do fifty and upward to hundred percent in a month. You just need control. Okay, with the high leverages, if you're trading correctly, you can go really really high upward to a thousand percent. Now most people think I just need a hundred percent. Well, it's tough. It's tough. It's not as easy as it sounds. Okay, Yuri, Yuri, um, I've watched all the webinars, the YouTube video, but I have some problems with my trading. Do you have any other recorded? Uh, a lot of my um, webinars, Yuri, are, are here already on uh, FX Street. There are some on, on, on Udemy and stuff like that, but that's just fast track, uh, you know, basic learnings and stuff like that. But most of my webinars are here on FX Street. So uh, you can just... Uh, type my name in the search on FX Street, and it'll everything will start showing up there. Okay. Any any questions so far based on leverage, guys?
So what is everyone going to do after this uh, session today? What is everyone going to do? I want you guys to all make me a promise before you leave today. Ronald, okay, cancel my leverage or lower it. Okay, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. Okay, Danny, look into your leverage, good. Harsha, lower it. Change leverage to something less risky, very good. Philip, take the step. Take the step to a better and healthy account because that's the only reason why we're trading Forex is to keep a healthy and growing account. We're not here for one month only trying to flip the money to make some extreme profits and then that's it for the rest of the year or the rest of my life. We're here to keep it consistent. Uh, Jason, um, uh, my demo account was barely losing money at low leverage. I have to be cautious. Yeah, be very, very cautious. Yeah, the lower the leverage, the better it is. Okay, these are all my personal opinions, and I've shared my my five things that cause me massive, massive damage. You know, again, uh, that's risk, um, and it goes together with psychology. Um, sometimes broker interference will also make my losses get come higher because of my leverage. Uh, bad money management comes into play because of this as well. And then finally, scaling or adding positions using uh, leverage. You know, that was the number one. Uh, I would say that would be a, one of the most powerful ones that, that took my account down faster than anything else. Okay. Um, Hamish, lower, took, should take it lower to like 20. Yeah, 20 to 1 is a good place to start. Even if you have the greed to trade more, it won't let you. It won't let you. Your account's going to say, and there's no more margin. It keeps you safe. You know, and you guys can let me know. And I'm always here doing webinars, uh, you know, once or twice a month. I'm always here doing a webinar um, uh, in the premium sector of FX Street. That's a wonderful place there. And then we also do it on a regular webinar, too. Uh, JJTFX, so what is the right brokerage? That one, I'm not going to have a say on it because <laughs> I... I I'm affiliated with many brokerages, so I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna say one is better than the other. So, I'm, unfortunately, I, I'm. I'd like to stay honest as possible, so I'm not gonna even mention my broker that I'm affiliated with. So, I'm just telling you, broker interference is gonna be there, practically all the time. So the issue is, don't get your emails ready. But uh, you know, don't get your emails ready to email them and say, "Hey, what's going on?" But find a way that how you can be safe. Okay. So Sharky Shark World leverage is deadly. So thank you all for attending. Uh, it was a wonderful time seeing all of you guys here in the room today, and uh, I will catch you guys next month. And thank you, FX Street, for having me here. Take care now. Bye-bye.